everybody. Sarah here, just waiting for everybody to come on for Serena Jam class. Chuck Ladder. Okay. <laughs> um, Sarah here. <laughs> Uh, I guess as people start coming on, if you guys can tell me if you can hear me, if you can't hear me, I'm yelling at you or whispering. Um, hey, Kay, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Am I yelling? Um, hey. Okay. It's okay. 12 o'clock. Even Dean's here. <laughs> um noon I'll go ahead and get started uh, my name is oh, thanks Kate my name is and um, some of you might know me as little top Moppet um, and some of you might not know that I actually recently moved to Fresno five hours north of my home to work for Duncan so I'm really excited to be part of the Duncan team now um, so yeah so my son and I <laughs> Uh, moved to Fresno, um, little backstory, teeny bit of a backstory. Uh, when I moved, it was snowing and I've lived in California, so I don't know how to exist in snow and it took a three hour drive, took 50 hours, but we made it and I'm here. So that was exciting. Um, so yeah, here at Duncan, my, uh, title is education and design specialist. So I'll be doing kind of the same things I was doing as Little Top Moppet, um, teaching and been to Ceramic Jam a bunch of times, so I'm super excited to be a part of it again. Uh, and then also just working on samples and curriculum, all the same things. So let's see. Um, uh, my project today that I'm gonna be doing is one of the projects that we have as part of the Duncan Colorworks program. So. This is something that might be new to most of you and I kind of wanted to give you a little summary of it. It's an online resource that we have on DuncanCeramics.com. It's free and it is curriculum based projects. So I know with everything going on, the current climate and just the world and how everything is right now, I know um, kids being out of school and being home, this is something that we thought might be a great resource for you to use for to-go kits, um, online classes, different things. Uh, it has a little bio about the artist, so you can use that as part of your curriculum, kind of the value of the class for the parents and the students. And then it has step-by-step -step instructions, uh, pictures of the step-by-step -step instructions, so you can kind of follow along. You can print them and put them into go kits so families and kids could follow along easily on their own you are not doing it as a virtual class um but yeah so we have that and this is a new one that i just wrote i'm really excited about it uh it's based on a picasso um ceramic project um kind of exciting i don't know if, if a lot of a lot of people i've talked to don't realize that picasso did ceramics for a long time and so this was something that um he did in the south of france and so we're gonna kind of go through that a little bit i'll show you more on the other side when we flip the camera um but yeah so I've been a teacher or was a teacher in the classroom for 17 years so really really excited to put these curriculum projects together and share this one with you and yeah so we'll go ahead and get started just bear with me because this is my first time doing this and sorry if you got my triple chin but I'm gonna flip the camera and we'll get started so I think that um, there's a link to, there should be a link to the handout. It's this right here. Um, it's got all the step-by-step -step instructions, supplies and things. I know we're just working with what everybody's got. The plate that I'm using is the province dinner plate. It's about nine inches, if that helps, because we do have these stencils here that you can use to trace. Or I'm always a proponent of free handing, but you know um okay can everybody see okay just want to make sure before i get started this is what the final piece will look like we're gonna kind of i'll kind of go through the steps a little bit we're going to um use the stencils so if you want you can start cutting those out 
Um, we have two fish, um, a fork and a lemon, and actually, if I can pull this up okay. So if you on Google and you look up Picasso ceramic fish plate, he did actually a bunch of different things. He did different vases shaped as animals and um, human figures and mythological things. Um, but I was really drawn to these fish. I think it's the colors and everything. But these are his and they were kind of like reliefs. And um, they're just really ooh, beautiful. So I don't know if you can see that there. Um, but that was kind of our inspiration for today's project. Um, okay, so if you wanna cut out your stencils, you can cut those out and then we're just gonna trace them onto the plate like this, if and when you're ready. I'll kind of go through a little bit of the steps so you know where we're going and make sure you have all your supplies. Uh, we are gonna use French dimensions today. If you don't have French dimensions, um, there, because we're all so remote, uh, you could use a writer bottle with um, really any color, just kind of use what you've got. Um, I'm using the white, so if you have a writer bottle with uh, white underglaze in it, that would probably work the best to get it to look most similar to the sample we've got here. Um, but the reason why I like to use the French dimensions as opposed to underglazes in a writer bottle is because uh, this one stays raised when it's fired. So since we're doing the watercolor technique and it's very runny, I like to use the French dimensions with it because it creates like a little wall so that when it's kind of runny and drippy, it stays in the little sections it's supposed to so I don't get as much of like the weird runnage mixiness that, um, is it as fun? And then for kids too, if we're talking about this in a kid's class, it's nice to have those little walls because they can sometimes be overzealous with the amount of water they use. And so it's very hard to mess up. Um, so that makes it very user-friendly for um, kids in the class setting. But uh, we've got the French Dimensions Pure White here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to um, draw that out. You're gonna wanna cut out your stencils, trace it. We're gonna do French dimensions and then we're gonna go through. And um, I know everybody has different versions of the watercolor technique. I use it a lot, a lot, a lot. So I will kind of go through, I'll be able to kind of demo how I do it to avoid getting brush strokes. So it has that puddly watercolor um, look. Uh, so we'll go through that after we trace. So. So here's this one with my pencil already on it. Um, couple things about French dimensions. I'll give you a couple of my tips really quick. Um, obviously shake it really well. It does get really thick. Um, obviously the most magical thing, you know, like when you have a brand new Sharpie, brand new bottle French dimensions is so amazing. Um, but even if it's been sitting for a little bit, if it's brand new, what I do is I take a, skewer that I did have that magically disappeared. Oh, Miss Skyla stole my skewer. <laughs> um, so you can, I don't know if you know this, but you can pop the top off of the French dimensions. So sometimes this gets kind of cloggy. You can clean it out and all that. So I'll kind of show you that. If you have a bottle that's been sitting a while, you can put a couple drops of water in there, take the skewer and stir it around, pop the top back on. And a lot of times that'll help when you're having a hard time getting it out of the bottle. There's also this trick here, if it gets clogged. And Dean showed me this magical thing. I've been using this stuff for 10, 11, 12 years and did not know this. So inside the cap, I have to share this. There's like a teeny tiny sticky outy thing. And so if it's just a teeny tiny clog on the front, they actually made this so that you can unclog it with the cap. So didn't know that, it's kind of awesome. Um, yeah. So one of, the, one of the fun things I've learned working here so far. Uh, all right, so when you use the French dimensions, you wanna try to shake it all to the front so you don't have any air bubbles. And then the way that I like to do the French dimensions is I 
hold it with both hands um, so that I have better control and I just move my wrist instead of doing it this way because my lines get kind of wobbly when I move across the plate this way. So I like to kind of anchor my elbows and move just my wrists when I'm using it. And then it's kind of one of those slow and steady, like the slower you go, the more wobbly it'll be. So you want a balance of not going crazy fast, but not going crazy slow. So I'll kind of show you and you want to stay right above and just ahead of your line. Like when you're driving and you look ahead, you don't want to look at where it's falling. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you. Start here, I already had a little ear bubble. When I get to a corner, I kind of stop so that the French Dimensions has a chance to make a little corner. So I'll kind of pause right there and then move in the next direction. And then always feel free to move your plate. Like, especially with customers, I always see them like trying to keep everything the same and then their arms are weird. So. Kind of do what's comfortable for you. I know some people don't like the two hand way. Kind of have to practice and do whatever feels comfortable for you. And I hope that you guys can kind of see okay with this angle. I'm not sure. Can't really see what I'm doing here. So let me know if, am I blocking it? Just a little bit, but. Okay, maybe if I do it. Maybe if I, ooh, should I try one hand? Ooh. So I kind of pause at the corner. Oh, don't judge me. Pro. <laughs> okay, and then this is our little lemon slice. All right, now once you get to this step, um, I know on the stencils that we, tr oh wait, first, do you guys have any questions about French Dimensions? No questions so far? Okay. Um, so right here is kind of, as a teacher, I like this part because kids get to use their imaginations a little bit. Like we're obviously going to discuss Picasso and what in, inspired him and how that inspires us. But I love the idea of kids being able to take something out in the universe and turn it into something that becomes theirs. So at this point... I don't have lots of stencils and patterns for all of the little extra things. Like if you see right here, like the lemon and the eyes and the little fins, the top fin up here, because this is kind of where um, you want kids to think for themselves, which is always the goal. So uh, you can freehand it. You can take a pencil and add it. I'm kind of a winger, so I'm just going to go for it. But you can add fins and designs there. If you were doing a virtual class and there was a way for kids to communicate back and forth with comments at this point, this is where I would try to engage them in conversation a little bit. So you might want to ask them, has anybody ever gone fishing? Or what do you think is the coolest part about, um, I, I'm obsessed with fish eyes because they're so ginormously big and disproportionate <laughs> to their bodies. So things like that, you want to try to engage them and especially not being there in person. If you're doing virtual classes, kind of having that element I think is very valuable for the kids and um, and their project. It makes them more connected to it. Um, but yeah, are there any, while I kind of do this, are there any questions so far? Or is everybody just busy painting everybody with me? Say hi. Hi everybody. <laughs> the camera's pointing down so I can't see everybody who's saying hi. I'm gonna rewatch <laughs> it later and then say hi to everybody two hours late. Drew says hi. Hi, Drew. I miss everybody. I'm really glad that we're able to do it this way, but I miss everybody. I hope everybody's okay. Um, let's see. Let's do the lemon. And 
one more. Oh, I'm gonna make this one really big just to be that kid. <laughs> okay. Who is painting along with me? Is anybody painting at home? I hope everybody's painting. Especially because then I want to see everybody's fish plates after. That's the best part. Seeing everybody's at the end. Okay. Um, it's gonna be great, especially when kids start doing this because you're gonna have kids who do nothing mm -hmm. and then you're gonna have kids who do exactly what you do and then you're gonna have the kid who is always my favorite is gonna go really and they're gonna add everything else to the edge and it's gonna be awesome okay jill roth wants to know how do you keep the bottles from getting clogged mm. from one time to the next oh good question okay so what i do is when i put the caps on them i store them upside down so that all of the moisture sits at the tip instead of air. And that definitely, definitely saves me a lot of time when I go to use it the next time. Um, Amy that says, that fork is for me. <laughs> no, that fork is me. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> oh my and goodness. Kate says her and Dan are both painting. Yay! Wow. Oh my goodness, I need to see them because they always have like quirky different versions of mm -hmm. each other. Um, Okay, yeah, so good question. Story French Dimensions upside down. I'm glad everybody's painting. Are we ready for the next step? And my fork's name is Amy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you guys watched Amy's Serum Gem class the other day. She said, she confessed that she used to teach school to watch Martha Stewart. <laughs> And she likes watching cooking shows, which my son and I love cooking shows. Well, he's 11 now, so he doesn't like doing anything with me currently, but we used to watch cooking shows together. Um, but I forgot what she said they called them, but I did my little prep, my swoopy in thingies where they're already done. So you're gonna, <laughs> moving on to the next step, you're gonna wanna let your French dimensions dry a little bit. Um, and then it's the same as with glazes. When it's shiny, it's wet. When it looks kind of dull and chalky, it's dry. Um, just the thicker spots are gonna take a little bit longer, but I have a dry one here just so I can start to demo the watercolor technique with you guys um, if you're painting along. And I guess do a lot of you do the watercolor technique already? It's very forgiving, and I think that that's especially why I love it so much. I have to confess, I'm not a big three coats on everything person, um, but I'm also impatient, so. Okay, so the first color we're gonna use is the dark taupe. Um, and we're gonna use kind of a smaller liner brush. Uh, when I um, was looking at the original Picasso pieces and thinking about how we can kind of have an antique shadow texture to uh, the French dimensions without having to wipe a sponge over it and making everything smear off. Um, I had this idea, so we're gonna water down our, can you guys see my palette here? I don't know if you can see my palette. Water, we're gonna water down the glaze and I usually do like a one-to-one -one where it looks milky um and i kind of water it down little by little because then the color and the water start to separate so i'll do little by little that's just my habit um and then when i have it all runny i'll load up my brush really heavy and then what we're gonna do to kind of create a little shadow with this texture is we're just going to kind of drop this really runny color over the top of the white. And you'll kind of see that it falls to the side in the little crevices. And if it's kind of thick, 
You can dip your brush in the water and just add water. It's not getting runny enough for you. I kind of go back and forth because I like it really washy. I'm just gonna go along and do all these lines here just so that we don't lose any of the texture when we go to do the other colors on top. Are there any questions so far on like watering down your glaze or you'd be surprised. Kids are really good at this because they're already adding water to their glaze <laughs> um, when they're not supposed to. So them being able to do this, they're actually really good at it. And like I said, it's super forgiving. Um, and even if you wanted to, like if you were doing a to-go kit or something, you could in your condiment cups pre-mix like half water, half glaze, and then their instructions is just to stir it up. And they don't even need to water it down if you're not sure you wanna do it that way. I used to do that when I taught classes when the kids were there with me, I would already have it pre-mixed if I had a lot of kids and couldn't really get around to everybody, I would pre-mix it. Okay, oops. I mean, did that on purpose. Okay, now the next step, as I finish this, I'm gonna kind of prep you. Um, I mean, obviously you guys have whatever colors you have. I am definitely not that person that's like, your sample better look like mine. I really like it when people break the rules a little bit, it's okay. Um, but you um, are going to wanna kind of plan your colors for your fish at this point. Um, I'm gonna kind of show you, I'm, if you've done watercolors on paper, you've seen like the wet on wet technique. Um, there's a way to do it on pottery too. Um, and sometimes you get this like really cool kind of uh, marbly look. So I'm gonna kind of go over that just to prepare you. So if you wanna kind of start setting aside your colors that you wanna use for your fish, um, that's the next step we're gonna do. But because you want to do it wet on wet and glazes tend to dry pretty quickly, you want to have your colors kind of picked out already so that you're ready to go and it doesn't dry on the plate for you. Uh, Sue Miller wants to know, why not use colored French dimensions? You could use colored French dimensions. Um, there are lots of colors um, and they are very bright. Um, the reason why I'm using the white is because um, I know not every studio carries all of the colors and I know within the context of now kind of moving towards to-go kits, it's kind of a little bit easier to have a larger stock of one color, but um, I think that the blue one would be really good with this one. And if you were able to give the co the kids multiple colors, like there's obviously a yellow for the lemon and there's a, the red is nice and bright. The red's amazing. It's so nice and bright. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking forward to being in the studio again. I think this could be a really fun class with all of the different colors for sure. That's a good question. Jenny Lynn says, loving the tattoos. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. I don't know if everybody knows the story while I finished this last fish. I'm not gonna not talk about my kids. So um, <laughs> <laughs> my son designs my tattoos, a new one every year. So he was eight years old and this one's the best one. When he was nine, he designed this one and it has a detachable tail. <laughs> and then when he was 10, he designed this one, it's me and him. And he just turned 11 on Monday, actually. Overnight, we have teenager attitude and everything. It's so great. So um, I'll be getting a new one soon, <laughs> hopefully. If he's not disliking me <laughs> when I ask him. 
I used to teach middle school. That was what I taught the most when I was a teacher. And now about to have one as my own child is not the same <laughs> as sending them home at the end of the day. It's all good. It's just the next phase, right? Right? <laughs> you veteran parents out there with adult children tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Um, but thank you. I do get compliments on my little dinosaurs. And then my PGG, because I'm in a gang. <laughs> um, okay, so once we get to this part, um, if you're painting along with me, hopefully you've picked out some colors. I'm going to pour mine out. And I think I'm going to do like kiwi, because I use that like all the time. And maybe ginger in some blue. Ooh, ooh, actually, change my mind. <laughs> Sorry. You made fun of the, me for saying I'm in a gang. The <laughs> who did? Amy. I don't even know why she's trying to make fun. She's in the same gang. Don't even act like you're cooler than me. We're the same. We're in the same <laughs> gang. Um, I'm going to do um, gray and blue to kind of show you guys the... Um, the wet on wet um but you guys can do whatever call you'd like on the sample here i've got the kiwi with some ginger and then a little bit of blue um on the fin so you guys can kind of play around with whatever color combinations you would like to use i'm going to use two different size brushes i'm going to use a larger hmm, let's switch to the bigger one let's use a larger one and a smaller one not a liner because uh, I want it to be able to hold a lot of uh, water and paint. Um, and I'm going to use a really big brush to fill these this big section because I need it to stay so wet. Um, so let's see. I'm going to water this. I have light gray here. This also will work with white really well. What kind of paint brushes do you like using? Um, so I used to kind of use whatever I had that was closest to me. Um, now that I'm here at Duncan, it's kind of nice because I have an endless supply of all different kinds of things. Um, I've been using the turquoise handle brushes, the discovery ones. Um, they are really moppy, which is great because I'm a very heavy painter, uh, so they hold a lot of paint for me. So I really, really like these Discovery ones. Um, when I paint with acrylics, I use the silver handle brushes. Um, but this liner right here is my new best friend. It's the 601 liner. And I love it and use it basically on almost everything. Um, yeah, that's my favorite, favorite. Such a liner. If I could paint the whole thing in a liner, I would. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm loading this big moppy brush up. And so that I don't get brush strokes when the color glaze like hits the bisque. What I'm doing is I'm loading it up and then I'm kind of puddling it and I'm rolling. Yeah, get it in there. I'm rolling my brush like this so that I'm kind of laying the color down instead of brushing it on. And you, you can see how I'm using tons of water. That's why I like this big brush, because I want it to puddle and be very, very wet, which is usually the opposite of what we do, right? And then what I can do is I can dip my brush in just water and I kind of dab it around to spread the color around. And I need more paint. And as I'm like loading it up and puddling it and adding water and making sure it's staying really, really wet, I'm gonna now go back with my other smaller brush. Forgot the fin. Nobody told me. Supposed to be helping out. Okay, so I'm gonna take the smaller brush and I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of the blue, get it really runny again. 
And while this is still really wet, is this like a good angle? Can you guys see? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of drop it in to the puddle. And I like those, like the fish that have the like blue stripes down the middle. But if you wanted to, um, you could tilt your plate. And while it's really puddly, it's kind of like... Kind of like the acrylic flow where it gets all marbly. But if you can get it puddly enough, you um, can swirl it around. And then if you if it's not, like not moving enough for you, you could drop a little bit of water in there. And you can kind of see how you can play around with the little swirls. Just kind of fun. And then back here, you'll see my gray is dried a little bit. So I'll kind of show you what it looks like if you apply it to it after it dries. It just doesn't swirl as much and move. It sits on top a little bit more, so it's not bad. But I kind of like when it gets all runny and I can swirl it around. Looks really cool. And I think I'm going to put some blue around his eye just to give him a black eye like he was in a fight. <laughs> All right. So that's kind of my watercolor tip is puddle it a lot, a lot. And then drip your next color in and then you can kind of swirl around. And then you'll see now like as it's already starting to dry, it has this weird mixy marbly look which is really fun that you can't really get from brushing it on um so then from here you just go ahead and do all of your other colors Are there any questions on the watercolor technique has anybody done it and had some issues or questions or tricky things Oh, you guys are all busy concentrating on your painting. That's why there's no questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hope that you remember to post pictures of them and tag us. Tag Biscuit Ports, tag Duncan P.Y.O.B. Tag, you can tag me. I'm on, still a little top mob on Instagram because um, we want to see everybody's stuff. It's the best part. The best part. It's my favorite. Pat Hines joined us. Hi, Miss Pat. How are you? You're well. Miss you. Tell Ed I said hi. <laughs> Your son's the best. He always buys me gin. Such a sweetheart. <laughs> he knows me too well already. Okay. And you can kind of see because of the rim here, um, I had to tilt it a little bit to get it up top and then a little bit of my blue got in there, but that's okay. If you look at the original Picasso pieces and just his style in general, he was never super duper precise. So that's one thing I really liked about his ceramics when I started doing all the research and discovered them is when he would glaze, um, it looks so great because it's just kind of, it's not sloppy. It's just kind of all over the place and drippy and amazing. Okay. And do the fourth next. Oh, I mean, I'm going to paint Amy next. What color does Amy <laughs> want to be? I feel like Amy is not gray at all. She's definitely not gray. Hmm. Uh, I'll make her green. Green's my favorite color, and Amy's one of my favorite people, so. Amy's gonna be green. <laughs> and I'm gonna actually switch to a bigger brush because it's a larger space, and if you know me, you know I'm very impatient. So if I can fill this space a little bit faster, I will. I'm gonna write Amy's name on here later. <laughs> so 
So if that's Amy, I'm probably definitely the lemon. A little cranky, a little <laughs> aggressive and impatient. Uh, <laughs> then the other gang members would be the little cutie fish. Unless and Michaela can be the, the fish. <clears throat> you can personify anything, really. Um, that and I just miss the girls. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend that I'm painting them as fish. Amy says green is perfect. Mm. I was hoping. <laughs> I was trying to capture you perfectly. Okay, so let's do this lemon here. As I'm finishing up this plate, and you guys are kind of seeing the, I'll kind of do the rolling technique in case you missed it. Um, you could also do the dabbing technique, which is this way. Just never want to actually paint with your brush like we had like we normally paint because you will get streakies on the bottom. You won't have that like puddle look. Are there any other questions? Or anything at all? About um engaging kids about curriculum teaching I mean I can take anything <clears throat> okay Let's see I think we can do a little bit of ginger on this one you look nervous. and maybe <laughs> oh I think you should <laughs> Larry Duncan just showed up and is trying to <laughs> throw me off and it's not working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Larry says hi though. Yes. <laughs> says hi after giving me a hard time. It's funny. Okay. So, let's see. If this one's puddly. Should I put some yellow in there or will it look too tight? I mean, that's actually what a kid would do, so it might be, put some blue maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we're gonna swirl it around and do this. I mean, you could do, actually take this marbly thing with the French dimensions and do other projects with that. Okay, definitely getting Mm, green lips and a blue tail. Okay. There are any questions on curriculum based things or I know with this everything going virtual and um, online, any questions on kind of helping the kids? during this time when they're not in school and how we can kind of fill that void. Any questions about the ColorWorks program? Is there other ColorWorks programs that would work for to-go kids? Yes, so we have, there are some clay projects in there um, and there are some bisque. Um, I actually have, okay, so normally it's either like a clay project um a bisque stain which is like our version of an acrylic so some of them are acrylic and then we have clay versions um so any one of them i think we're all pretty creative i think even if you took a clay version of a project you could figure out kind of an underglaze bisque version way of doing it um but this particular project i got a little uh way extra which <laughs> It sounds like me. So um, I did, um, this is this is the Ceramajam version of the ColorWorks program. You guys actually got like a very kind of different specific template that I made just for you guys. Um, the one on ColorWorks is uh, a little different, but we have this one here. It's because it has the stencils as part of it. So you have like the underglaze version of it. Um, the same project we have, we made an acrylic 
version. Um, we have um, a line of acrylics called Bisque Stain and they are specially formulated to paint onto porous surfaces. So you use a lot less product on the bisque because it just doesn't soak it up as much and it's really creamy and goes on really nice. I know Amy's played with them before, like they're so smooth and magical. Um, but so the colors are listed there, but you could convert them to anything you've got there. But we have um, an acrylic version of it. And then I know some studios I see are do actually doing clay to go kits. So if you wanted to do the clay version, um, we do have the curriculum and the steps. And what's nice about the Colorworks program is there's pictures of, of me doing each step. So um, like I said, that's amazing for to-go kits because you can just print out the PDF, staple it and send it home. And it's very self-explanatory and easy to follow. So we do have a clay version. Um, we also have, this is one that I did, I think, last year. This is another one that would be good for a to-go kit. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know Yoyoi Kusama. Uh, she's amazing, and I need to meet her. I love her. Uh, she's still alive. She's like 98 or something. She lives in Japan. But she has um, this giant pumpkin the ceramic pumpkin that sits on the edge of this dock and she does these giant installation rooms um she has this one called the infinity room and it's mirrors everyone and like thousands of led lights so you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere that goes on for forever but she has um these pumpkins and um so this one is also kind of utilizing the watercolor technique you could do it with the two three coats um but she has polka dots on her pumpkins. And so this is kind of a fun project that you can do with kids because you can use um, the back of a pencil. You can use the back of the brush handles. Um, we also use like little wooden dowels to get different sizes. So that's kind of like a fun tactile kids could do as a technique on top of the curriculum and learning about the artist. But we do have this one. And then we have um, another one that is bisque. That would be good for... Um, the situation with these to-go kits, um, it's actually based on an old Japanese um, stitching technique. And so I created a way to get the textile texture onto pottery using um, the matte glazes that we have, the true mats. Um, so you can find that one um, on our website also. And it has a little lesson plan. I'll drop the link. Okay, Skyla's gonna drop the link right now so you guys can have a link to that. And it has different ones. There's some other uh, clay ones there too. Those are the three that um, I put together. And I know Skyla and I are talking about um, adding some more also to get some more uh, content for you guys. Um, and you also have the, the link right here on your handout also. But she'll drop that link and you can kind of look at them there. And my email's at the top of the handout. So if you guys go in, go on dunganceramics.com and you go into the Colorworks program and you're wondering how to convert something to a different medium or you just have general questions about any of the curriculum in there, please email me. Um, I feel like, especially now with everything going on, if there's any way that I can be a help, please reach out. I, um, I am working from home most of the time. So I'm on my phone and on the computer all the time and you can reach me and please reach out. I'm more than happy to help with anything that I can in any way that I can. Um, yeah, so, okay. The last step on our project is the background of the plate. So um, I used uh, Bright Jade because if you look at the those original um, Picasso pictures, he used kind of like a turquoisey color. And that was why I picked this plate shape actually when you look at the other ones he had um the shape of the plate was kind of the shape of this one with the little waviness um oh something else I do want to show you really quick before I finish is if you look at because obviously Picasso was using high fire glazes um
if you wanted to do more of a high fire look, um, we have these Envision glazes and I just wanted to show you the sample because it's kind of my new favorite product. Um, but it's that high fire look with uh, low fire glazes. You don't dip it. It's got extra gloss in it. So you're just going to put the three coats everywhere and then stick it right into the kiln stilted and fire it. Um, but it has really, really cool textures there. But I just wanted to show that one because my new favorite. Um, okay, so doing the jade on the background. My only kind of tip, because we've been going through this and you guys are already watercolor pros or almost pro by now. Um, I like to use a big brush, especially with kids, because kids are going to take the big brush and they're going to try to go into these tiny <laughs> sections with a, the big brush. I will kind of show them that I use the big brush in the big areas and then I will switch to a smaller brush. Like I'll have two brushes going at the same time. And um, I'm making a mess, Ooh, as always. So when I get to this little crevice here, even right there, my brush is kind of big. Sometimes I'll puddle it and I'll take a smaller brush and I'll just direct the water there. But that's something you can kind of show kids or even customers in general. Like it's okay to use two sizes at one time because if you did the whole thing with this teeny brush, that would take forever. And if you did the whole thing with the giant brush, you'd have green everywhere. So that's kind of my background tip. No, do we have any other? I know we're kind of winding down to the end of it. I kind of don't want to, I was, I, if I'm being honest, I'm always too honest, but I was kind of nervous and never done Facebook Live like this before. Thank goodness Amy's class on how to hold a virtual class was before mine. <laughs> <laughs> and she was saying, just be confident because kids can, I mean, and adults, but like people can smell fear. <laughs> so true. Um... But now that I'm on here, I just miss everybody and I don't want to say bye. But does anybody else have any other questions before we kind of finish up? Questions about anything. No, no questions. Tina says you're amazing. Oh, thanks, Tina. You're amazing. Uh, Amy did not know this was your first live. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you, Miss Amy. Whew. That definitely eases my stomach ache that I've had for the last how many minutes have I been on? <laughs> Yay. Uh, Kate wants to know how Sam is liking his new school. Oh. Hmm. Also, if I'm being honest, um, when you're 10 and your mom makes you move away from everybody in the middle of the school year, um, we're still in an adjustment period. Um, his teacher's really great. He just had this special lady friend right before we moved. And so I have literally destroyed my... 10, 11 year old's life could because he'll never meet anybody else like her ever again. <laughs> but other than that, it's been pretty great. <laughs> he got a new room and it's bigger than his room was at home and school's right across the street, which is nice. Um, Ed Hines, why not hey, two Ed. or three coats for this glaze? Um, I don't do two or three coats because, it's a good question, because I like the watercolor look. So three coats would make it totally, completely solid. And because I'm doing it really watery, I like, I'm trying to get this look of swirly, washy, light, and dark. 
Um, you could do, if you didn't want to do the watercolor technique, you could take the same steps and do three coats. And um, especially like if you didn't have the French dimensions and you wanted to kind of do it as more of like a three coats and then you could outline it, you could totally adjust it that way too. I just really like the forgiving kind of swirly look. Question from Tracy. Can you put the French dimensions on after you've done the fish? You could. Um, you could. I would suggest doing that. And actually that's kind of a really cool look. Like sometimes when you see... I know especially now we're on Instagram where um, people who do like printmaking or they're doing the stamp carving and they have two reliefs and they'll have like the one with the color and then the one with the outline and the one with the outline is like slightly off. It's kind of a cool look. You could totally do that and do the French dimensions afterwards and kind of have that printmaking look. The only thing that will be a little tricky is your watercolor is going to drip everywhere. So if you're going to do the French dimensions second, I would suggest just doing the regular brush on one, two, or three coats and then go back and do the French dimensions. But that could be a cool look. But it is better to do it first because it acts as a wall. Yeah, if you're doing the watercolor, for sure do it first because then it keeps you from, like right here, all that blue would have dripped out and it would have been really hard to hold in. So, yeah, if you're doing watercolor, um, French dimensions first. But it can go on top of the underglazes. It can be used either way. Um, another question, is there a reason you don't water your paint before instead of dipping brush into water then into concepts? Good question. Um, and I'll kind of show you my palette right now and that'll kind of show you why. You can see right here, it starts to separate because the color, the glaze, the clay stuff is heavier. So it sinks down and then it separates and the water sits on top. So then I could go back and I could remix it, but I just, um because I don't wanna go back and add another step, I mix as I go along. The green is weird, like certain colors are weird that you know have two, three colors that make that color because then it kind of separates a little bit. Um, that's why I like to mix as I go along because then the color is more accurate. Um, but you could definitely pre-mix them and then remix them when you go to paint. You can totally do it either way. Uh, do you dip this in clear after the French dimensions? Yes, you are going to clear glaze and stilt and fire this to cone 06. Yes. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what colors were on the original sample? What colors were on the... Oh, okay. So on the original one, kiwi and bright ginger dots. Um... The fin is kiwi with sapphire on top. I did bright ginger on the fins on the top fish. On the bottom one, I did a mixture of the kiwi with a little bit of the bright straw to get like a chartreuse color and then put a little bit of blue with the yellow and green in the tail because then it gets kind of turquoisey. So it's like another fun, it's like slight, like you could put a little bit of color theory into your lesson as well. The Fork is gray. This one's not Amy. Um, this Amy's not neutral. And then the lemon is just the yellow, the bright straw. And then the eyes. Oh, so then the eyes on the last step. I don't water down the taupe when I do the eyes. I just did, um, I'm a heavy painter, so I did one thick coat. You might want to do two if you're a dainty painter. Um, but one or two coats of the dark taupe, not watered down for the eyes. Um, so they're nice and dark like fish eyes on that one. <laughs> Kendra Knowles says, that's me. I like the neutral. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. We need all the different kinds of forks. <laughs> I feel like my fork would just be all the colors mm -hmm. at one time. <laughs> like too much. <laughs> Okay, everybody, I'm just about done. So thank you for joining me. It's really fun painting with everybody. I feel like I'm giving everybody air hugs right now. Miss everybody. Hope um, all of you are staying safe and healthy and um, we're here for you if you need anything, have any questions or 
anything like that, need help with anything, please reach out. And um, yeah, take care, everybody. Thank you.